Well, it seems like about a decade ago, but it was only one calendar year from today that the creepy porn lawyer was all over television, MSNBC and CNN. And they were telling us that he was presidential material, in case you've forgotten. Here it is. This president all but acknowledged Vladimir Putin as the president of the United States. Yes, it's ridiculous, Chris, as to why the president would not want to get to the bottom of the Russian collusion situation unless he knows he's guilty. Mr. President, for you to live as a Manchurian candidate in our White House. Why am I on CNN so much and why are you giving him so much airtime? Well, guess what? This is why. We will never be part of any effort to snow the American people, period. Well, because karma is absolutely real, things promptly went south for the creepy porn lawyer. He's now facing years in prison for, how much time do you have? Extortion, theft, tax evasion, lots of other things. But he's a sporty character. He's not ready to give up just yet. Today, the creepy porn lawyer pleaded not guilty to embezzlement charges. What's next for him? Well, author and columnist Mark Stein has been following this case as carefully as a layman can, and he joins us now <laughs> in his assessment. So, Mark, is there a hope that CPL stays out of the big house? Uh, not really, because uh, the federal justice system wins 99% of its cases, 97% uh, of them without uh, ever taking them to trial. That is a rate of success uh, that Kim Jong-un would envy. So he is up against some pretty stiff odds. And I love all this stuff, you know, I believe in the presumption of innocence. I do, too. I do, too. I'm with him on that. But in the end, the reality of the federal justice system, both for, uh, both for this guy and for the actress uh, that Trace was talking about, is that at some point you're looking at 475 years in jail if you go to trial, uh, so you tend to, to cut a plea. And the heroic moment here, I'll be interested to see if that survives all the way to the courthouse. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to prejudge the situation, and I'm not you know, a, a juror here. I'm not even a, a mm. licensed attorney. But all I know is that when he sat in this studio this fall, our stage manager is a pretty sturdy character, right. was rattled to be in his presence. So no. creepy no. was his presence. I don't think well, that's, it, that's not going to help him in court. No, no, it won't. And, and the reality is, is that if it weren't for this arraignment, he'd have been at that White House correspondence dinner and he'd have been fated by those guys. Yes. And, it, yes. and they'd have said, he's speaking truth to power. And they'd have done all that flim flam with him. And the fact is, he's just a rotten, sleazy lawyer who co-mingles his clients' accounts, which in California is about the one thing... I mean, the California Ethics Code is the shortest ethics code on the planet for California Bar Association, but that's about the one thing you can still be nailed on. And it turns out he's not a heroic presidential speaking truth to power guy. He's just a flim-flam shyster who steals from his clients. Uh, and, and, and you could so see right. that, and CNN couldn't. He, if it weren't for this, he would have been there this weekend with mm. Jeff Zucker's Mary and I sipping Prosecco. Mm. So I have to ask mm. you about this story. We, we talked about this last week, but it just it had your name all over it. So last mm. week, Filipino President Rodrigo Duterte vowed to wage war on Canada if they didn't stop dumping garbage into the Philippines. We won't mm. pretend to be impartial in this fight. We explained last week, if it's war, the Philippines has our full support. I was shocked that he would send his garbage to the Philippines. A struggling third world country needs more Canadian garbage? I mean, it just seemed well, so got... insensitive. I and mean, that seemed like, I don't know, that seemed like a form of, of colonialism, garbage colonialism. Well, I, don't think it's ins I don't think it's a question of insensitivity. You know, Tucker, our prime minister is very, very sensitive. Then why is he sending his air gel bottles to Manila? It just seems like <laughs> white privilege to me. I'm just throwing that out there. So it looks like the threats from Duterte worked. Canada's ambassador has said his country is scrambling to bring back mm. Trudeau's hair gel bottles. Yeah. We've already indicated that we are prepared to take the trash back. Um, so um, this is an issue that both governments have to work on and solve together. So that's all I'm going to say at this point. Yes, but the timeline of the government for you, take it uh, back this we're week. We're working as quickly as we can. No timeline. We're working as quickly as we can. So Canada just got backed down by the Philippines? 
Oh no! This 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 is this is terrible, Tucker. These are used adult diapers that Canada. When we go to war, we take it seriously. This is Canada's shock and awe, leaving used adult diapers on the dock in Manila. And you were wrong <laughs> to blame Justin Trudeau for this. These are adult diapers, and he's still on child size. So if you continue to provoke us, Tucker. With all your saber rattling to Canada, we've read that poem at the bottom of the Statue of Liberty about the uh, the, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. This is the most amount of refuse on the most teeming shore in history, and we're going <laughs> to drop it off in the harbour in New York if you don't back off with your saber rattling to Canada. <laughs> We'd have to beat you in a pillow fight if that happened. But I, mm. <laughs> I gotta mm. say, do you think, as a Canadian? Does this damage the national pride that most Canadians feel deep inside? Well, I, th I think it is actually a beautiful thing because this is recycling in action. You know, before we just used to toss the adult... Well, I personally give my adult diapers to the Clinton Foundation because that way they're tax deductible. But before <laughs> we just used to toss... Before, we just used to toss them in the landfill. And now we say, oh, well, we need to save the planet, so let's ship them all the way to the Philippines and leave them sitting on the dock in uh, the Philippines for six years. It's you know, very smart. Is... And you know why? It's for the climate. And I, just, I yeah, want to thank it's you for your work the planet. on behalf of One the climate. One diaper at a time, Tucker. One diaper at a time. However many diapers it takes for the climate, we'll mm. be there, you and me. Mark, great to see you. Thank you for that.